The second principle has to do with different potentials. So it would be really great to think kind of like my fair lady or, you know, anybody can become anything. Uh, but there's a reality check there. We are born, you're born with the best genes your parents can pass down to you, right? And so based on what you inherit genetically, those things can be potentiated by your environment. And so we know that, you know, not everybody can become everything. Different people and their different gifts, you know, are going to contribute to our society in different ways. So each individual's brain is differently prepared to learn different tasks. And this is thanks to what is inherited by the genes, but also what occurs in your environment, right? So learning capacities are shaped by the context of learning, by prior learning experiences, by your personal choice, by your biology and genetic makeup, and the pre and perinatal events that happened to you. So what your parents did to you or didn't do to you and your early childhood years does have an influence, does impact to a certain extent what you are able to do then at what speed you're able to do things in a classroom setting. Now, that is not to say that people can't always get better. You can have these two parents who were who are world champion tennis players, and the kid just might not have any interest, background experience, um, and feel you know too much pressure. Maybe he won't be that great tennis star. Maybe he doesn't have the opportunity to play so much, or maybe he's got other interests where he's putting his energy. So you can be born genetically with a predisposition towards something, and that can never be potentiated due to what happens in your environment. But the opposite is also true. You can be born um, with maybe average potential, but you're in such a rich environment that it just brings out the best in what you're able to do. So we know this really strange and important balance of nature and nurture comes into play here. But all of these uh, point to the idea that we are born with different potentials um, and we are able to maximize those potentials based on what can occur in our environments. This is going to be a celebrate as far as teaching is concerned because here's where teaching really makes a difference. I always tell teachers it's really uh, something I would never uh, measure your worth as a teacher by how well your, you know, your best students do because they're going to do well, you know, with, without, or in spite of you. So, you know, you measure great teachers by the ones who can pull up those kids by their bootstraps, the ones that are struggling learners, and you can see how they grow. Uh, into really maximizing their potentials. That is how I would measure a great teacher. And this has implications, you know, in our teaching practice. What does this mean if people have different types of potentials? What does this mean about differentiation? What does this mean about inclusion education? It really gives us pause and actually makes us want to celebrate the fact that we have such human variability in our classrooms. So different kids are going to have different potentials, but the key thing that we have to remember, especially as teachers, is that independent of the level that a student enters, everybody can grow, right? So you might have a couple guys entering at different levels, but all of them, with rehearsal, practice, training, all of them can improve. So we know that boy genius can grow just as, you know, somebody with a lower potential in a certain area can also grow. They grow with practice and rehearsal. So we have to believe in uh, students' ability to improve, but we also have to accept the fact that, that not everybody's going to reach the same achievement levels at the same time and in the same way and based on the same teaching methodologies.